Tonight I want to talk about the Festool um, domino connector system. Um, I have the 500 domino cutter and I'm going to use the 500 connector system to assemble a cabinet. The connector system comes with the parts that you need so that you can do a, a knockdown version of a, a cabinet so that if you had to transport it laying flat and then assemble it on a job site, you could do that. Um, and there's a couple of different scenarios that this works with. I'm just gonna do a 12 inch cabinet, about 18 inches high, 12 inches deep, and about 13 inches wide or so. And I'm gonna show how I use the domino cutter and use the parts to assemble this cabinet. So the first thing that I did on this cabinet here is I, I drew some lines for where I wanna put the dominoes I, and the connectors. I came in 37 millimeters off the edge because that's a key setting on the domino cutter. Then I found the center of the domino or the center of the cabinet. And then on the bottom, the 37 millimeters was gonna interfere with my dado for the back of the cabinet, or if this was a drawer box. So what I'll do is I, I'll take the, the square, I'm gonna draw a line on that mark, find the center. It's critical you try to line these boards up nice and get these lines accurate. And I've identified these parts as this being the top, this is the top. Uh, when I drill these holes, I'm gonna drill in 15 millimeters here and 28 millimeters on the top piece. That's key for the components to work right. So then I'll go ahead and mark the other side of the top and draw that. I'm just gonna write 15 on here and I'll write 28 again on this. I did the same thing on the other side. I wrote bottom, did the same lines. So what I'm gonna do is we'll come over here and I'm gonna grab the domino cutter. And this is gonna take the, the eight millimeter bit. So with the domino cutter, we take the tool, separate to, and I have the eight millimeter bit in it. But if you need to change the bit, you're gonna lock this piece here. You're gonna loosen this. Um, since I already have that in there, I'm gonna set this back in. That lines up in there. We need to adjust, tilt the table to 90, the fence. And then I'm gonna set the depth here, the height at 20 millimeters. My material is probably 18 millimeters, but I'm gonna round up and use the preset stop on here. And I'm gonna lock that in at 20 millimeters. So it's not gonna be perfectly centered on the board, which doesn't matter. If you ever need to repeat this, you wanna always try to go with the preset setting. I'm also gonna use the tight fitting there, rather than the loose, because there's a medium and a loose. There's two, two loose settings, and those will come into play in other areas. Um, for this one, I'm gonna do tight on all the pieces. Okay, so now I can take the cabinet apart. I've already pre-cut the dados for the back, pre-cut the sides, the front and back. Typically, I would have done this um, when I was making kitchen cabinets. I would have done white melamine or a melamine color on the inside, a paintable, glueable piece on the outside, or a veneer so it could be stained or painted. Um, and then I would have screwed the cabinets together and I would have covered it with um, veneer or formica on the outside. For years, I did that. So this would be a, an alternative, a different way of doing it. Um, also being knockdown fitting, if it's a bigger cabinet, you could transport it laying down and then put it together on the job site. So I'm gonna take these clamps off. I do have the back in there right now, which I'm gonna take out. So I'm going 15 millimeters deep, 28 millimeters deep. This is the top. You can see the data for the, the back. Top, bottom, back. So these pieces I'm going 15 millimeters into. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna use the vacuum pump. So I'm gonna tilt this down. I'm gonna turn the vacuum pump on. I'm gonna clamp the vacuum pump to the table. So now it's stuck to the table. This isn't going to tilt or turn. 
I'm going to take my piece here, and these are the 15 millimeter pieces on the sides of the cabinet. I'm going to vacuum suction that to the to the bench, the clamp. I'm going to set the depth here so that the cutter goes in 15 millimeters. I've already set this for 20, which is half of the material for the height. I'm registering off the top and bottom of the cabinet. I'm going to use the twisted plug. That's going to fit in there, plug it in and turn it one quarter turn. I'm also going to hook it up to a vacuum. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to use the pointer or the center to line up with my lines and I'm going to go in 15 millimeters. I'm going to line that up. the bottom. We'll have that setting set. At the 15 millimeters, I'm going to grab the other side, the left side, and do the same thing. Notice when I'm doing this, I'm not putting my hands below here just in case the cutter is kind of deep and pops through. I am putting my hands to line the side, indicate where the line is, but I put my hands on top of the, the um, guide. Fence. this on here. The clamp is a very nice system so you don't have to go and ind individually clamp all these pieces down. So I'll release that. I'm going to change the position of the vacuum clamp so that I can pivot this so it's more in the horizontal position. And I'm going to put this here. This is the top. I'm going to change the depth to 28 millimeters deep. And I'm going to go and line that up again with the line. I can turn this if I don't want to clamp it. I can turn this and I can actually spin this. So I'm going to spin this and I'm going to tighten that to turn it around again. This has a lot of suction really holding that tight rather than fumbling around with clamps. This one, that was the top, this one's the bottom. It's still set at the 28 millimeters deep. What I really like about this um, is the dust extraction. 
with the hooked up to the vacuum, the tool, the vacuum automatically turns on when I to, turn the tool on and we don't see any dust at all. I am wearing safety glasses, but I, I'm not gonna say I don't need them, but I probably don't need them. domino cutter do you can see it's got a bit in it and what happens is that plunges in I'm going to turn this on I'm going to be careful where my hands are just so you can see how that works okay now that I've done all those pieces the next step is I need to take from the domino box this drill guide and this drill bit. I'm going to put a connector here. So in here I put a C for a connector and I put a D for a domino. It's going to take an eight millimeter domino that are a special length. So unfortunately you got to buy special ones or you got to cut some down. Looks like they're eight by 36. So they are a special one that fits in there. I'm gonna take the drill bit that comes with this set and this drill guide comes with this set also. And what happens is you can set this up so you're drilling the holes so the attachments are inside the cabinet or outside the cabinet. I'm always gonna to choose to put them on the outside of the cabinet. So what happens is you loosen this and then this part here will slide up and down. That fits into that eight millimeter domino hole. Then you push this down See, you take this and line this up so it's sitting flush with the material, with the hole in there. And then I'm gonna take this drill bit and I'm gonna put it in the drill and tighten that down really good. Now I'm only doing the two outside pieces. The center one, I'm gonna use the domino for alignment and then use the connectors on the outside. So with this, you're gonna take this, I'm gonna just make sure that's seating on there right. And then it helps if you hook this up to the vacuum because what'll happen is when you drill that hole, it's gonna fill up your previous cut with the, um, with the dust from the drill. And it also helps if you clamp this down so that this stays tight. So you can just take this, put pressure on there. And clamp that down. You can hold it down with your hand once you get used to it, but I'd probably clamp it down just to be more accurate. So take this drill bit. I'm gonna put this in drill. I'm gonna turn it up to the faster speed. I'm turn the vacuum on.
release the foot pedal, and I gotta do the same thing to the other piece. I'm gonna set that in there. I'll clamp that down just to help line it up. Make sure it's pressed all the way in. Make sure the vacuum back on. You can see here where the vacuum holds on to that and it really helps get all that dust out of there. But you turn the vacuum clamp off. This still has some holding power, even with the vacuum clamp off a little bit. I'm gonna release the foot pedal. Now we're gonna go back and um, put the fittings in there to see how this draws together. So this is the top, the bottom. Um, I would typically sand all these before I put it together. Um, I'm just doing a test fit, but with this, you could even stain or finish it with it apart. So there I have bottom and I have top here. So this is the other side. That's why I label these. Just because when you're drawing these lines, just in case you don't put them in the right area, that's gonna fit together. So in the domino connector box, there's a couple pieces. There's different scenarios that could be used. So I'm gonna use these, and I'm gonna use these. Some of those, some of those. And let me show you how they fit in there. Let me grab a hammer. So I typically take the side pieces and I'm gonna hammer these in here. Now it's important, there's one way it fits in there. You can see the thread goes in there then there's these little tabs on the top that hold it. So that's going to fit in. And the theory behind this is, if I have that in there right, the theory behind this, let me, before I put that in there, is the screw is going to come in here. And when that twists, it's going to cause this bottom part to expand out. So you want to put it with those little tabs on the top. And if you drill those the right depth, they should go just below the surface. So just slightly below the surface. So again, the tabs up, just tap them in slightly below the surface. This one's gonna get the dowel or domino. That's gonna fit in there. And then this piece is gonna thread into this. So it comes with a Allen wrench head to put that in there. Now you kind of do want to over tighten it, but you can see here, where this piece is, that's where the screw goes in. The set screw goes in and opens that up. So when you tighten this, you wanna bring that even with that spot. 
If you want to get it even tighter, you could put a wrench on it and you could spin that one more time around so that really spreads that open. I don't think it needs that much, but that's, that's pretty tight. Okay, so the different scenarios, if you were doing these with um, line boring, adjustable shelf holes, five millimeters, there's actually one that fits into that. You probably don't want to take these and um, transport these with these sticking out because if um, these banged up against each other, it'd probably damage what your project. So I would probably put these on on the job site if you're doing that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and preload all the parts for this. I'm gonna take these again, tab side up. The tabs, just the little prongs, or I'm gonna call them tabs on the side. The threads that mm -hmm. goes on the bottom. And then the domino in the center. And the domino is just, it's an alignment part. Um, just to help you hold it together. You could put the connectors there. I don't really think it's necessary. Then with this one, this was, um, this was the top. This is the bottom and the groove for the back. So this one's gonna fit in here like this. So with this, we're gonna drop this piece in here. And this piece, I always pay attention to this. This one you can get out if you put it in there wrong. This one could come out easy, but you can see where the threaded insert um, fits in there. So and the hole goes through it is for that pin. So I'm gonna drop this in here with the threads up, do the same thing to the other side with the threads up and the hole for it to insert. And then it has these kind of locking devices. So this goes in and makes it so that thing can't turn. It's a little plastic sleeve. And I'm just gonna tap that in. And again, just below the surface. So it's not protruding or it's not proud and do the same thing to the other side. And I think they call these um, Gibbs screws, I believe is the name. And then that that um, that fits in there. So we're gonna put two of the Gibbs screws in. And I did buy the assortment pack of all the different parts for this. So I have different scenarios I could use it on. Um, and I basically have used the the same one a few times, um, just on some sample cabinets in the, the shop. So we can take that wrench, looks like it's a six millimeter, five millimeter, eight millimeter. It's a millimeter. <laughs> I'm gonna turn that, open that up, spread that out. I'm not gonna over tighten this one like I did that first one. It's snug, it's not coming out. So this fits in there. Get that got it snug, then I backed it up a little bit so I didn't have to fight it, turning it all the, room, all the way around. So this was the bottom, 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 back side represent the dado, and then this is gonna fit in here. And I'm gonna have to tap it just a tiny bit because of the, the dowel. We'll come back and see what's going on there. Let me see if I back this out. It could be that, that screw's hitting it. So you might, I tightened that screw so it, it fits in there. I gotta hit the domino down. Okay, so you see how that lines up? And then when this screw fits in there, it actually pulls that really tight and it's flush with the bottom and it's lining up. So over here, you can see it's gonna pull that tight. Then I can load the rest of the parts on the other pieces. So again, I'm gonna grab these pieces with the threads out and the hole up. I'm gonna drop it in this hole, doesn't look in the top one. Do the same thing the other side. Press that in there. Put the retaining clips in there so that doesn't twist. Tap those in just a little bit below the surface. Um, 
I'm gonna hold off on putting the screw in there. Okay, so that's that piece. We're gonna take the top piece and this one lines up here. So I'm gonna take that and um, I need to grab some more of those from the box. So this is an awesome alternative for when you have to do something where maybe you can't transport it, um, you need to transport it taken apart. Um, let me put those. Just below the surface. And then I'm gonna take um, this one and hammer it down here, the data to the back. This is the top, it says top and top. That fits together. Didn't have to hammer that one like I did last time. Then I'm gonna put these um, Gibbs screws in. If they're not called the Gibbs screw, I'm not sure what they are. I thought that's what I heard they're called. Then I'm gonna put that in here and I'm gonna tighten that down. And then put the one on the other side. Now you could put these on the inside of the cabinet, the outside. I'm choosing the outside. Um, again, I would probably sand the cabinet first. I'm going to slide the back in. And then I can grab the other side. I, I do like to sand the inside of the cabinet before I put that together. So again, with the tab up, tab up, tab up. I keep saying that because I have done it the wrong way and I struggle to get that piece out. So um, tap those in even, just lightly below the surface. Doing that 15 millimeters deep automatically allows it that extra space. They are below the surface, they're not proud. I'm gonna take the domino, tap that in. Now, if you want to do knockdown fittings, you can you can lightly sand or get a hand plane and take that little edge off there, and that way these fit in a little bit easier. Um, one thing I didn't do is I was gonna put um, a hanging strip or a French cleat in here. I'm gonna call it a hanging strip. French cleat would be if we cut a 45 on that and we wanted to be able to hang it on the wall so you didn't see the screws. Typically, we'd put a four inch um, hanging strip or a nail or whatever you want to call it on the top and the bottom of the cabinet. So when you screw the cabinet to the wall, and I've, I've even um, put those in with the dominoes. You could even do them with the domino connectors, um, or maybe not, just, just a loose domino, or you could put screw pockets in to hold that in there, or you could nail it from the outside. I was trying to avoid the nails um, so I might have to take the other piece apart to domino that if I wanted to put that in or put in the screw pockets. So I'm going to put these in. So that actually makes a simple way of doing a cabinet if you're, um, been doing cabinets the traditional way with dados and rabbits. Um, you still got to do steps. Um, what, what's nice about this, if you had edge banded the face, um, you'd be able to put these together and versus how I used to put them together with the screws, I would always have to go back and cover that side with Formica or veneer to cover, to cover the screw. Um, so it was a waste of an extra material because I, I like to use the wood veneer that's wood on wood rather than a 10 mil paper backer because I used a water-based contact cement and I found that the water-based contact cement kind of saturated that 10 mil paper backer and I'd always see waves and stuff in the in the project and I didn't, I didn't like that. So with this way I could have ordered pre sheets that were, um, had 
laminate on one side or the wood veneer on the other and whatever was inside the cabinet. If the cabinet was gonna be um, white melamine or maple melamine or almond, black, whatever color the customer wanted. I'm gonna put the insertion retaining clips in there. I've already got the dominoes in there, the backs in there. I'm gonna set this on. So my only challenge right now is making sure I get this lined up and the back fits in there. So I'm gonna push that down. This one looks like the head of it's turned a little bit. We'll, we'll, see. we'll see if it, I'm gonna turn it a little bit. So just this, the screw part here is turned a little bit just so that that, that screw fits in there better. I'm gonna turn that there so that the screw fits in there and pulls that tighter. You could use a hammer, a mallet. I'm gonna take those screws. So versus um, dadoing and rabbiting these, um, I would have to glue and clamp the cabinet. I'd have to nail the cabinet. I'd have to let it sit um, overnight, or I'd have to screw it and put the veneer on. So with this, I can put this cabinet together. I don't need any glue. And I could take this back apart so that I could finish it, transport it, assemble on the job. And then they even make um, plastic caps that fit on here. Or if you put that up against the ceiling, if this was an upper cabinet, if you put this down on the below and maybe put a light rail and some other cabinet lighting, that makes a really quick, fast cabinet. Um, and you, I don't like seeing them from the inside. So they make an assortment of colors of caps. There's white, there's an almond, there's gray silver it comes with an assortment of different cover caps you could put on there so you could find closer to the color of your wood or if you did on the inside of the cabinet you could do it and that basically just fits over that hole and covers that if you need it and then you could just tap that down with the hammer um, so that that's the way you could finish them off if you needed to That's basically the um, Festool um, 500 domino cutter with the 500 Connect system. Um, I, I think that's a game changer for me. Thank you. Please subscribe.